so our uh, our project is on speech recognition of isolated Arabic words using deep learning models. And uh, as Kurt uh, mentioned, uh, uh, artificial intelligence became very uh, popular in nowadays. And uh, we, uh, we will talk about the motivation of the study. We will talk about the introduction, give you an introduction about our project. And uh, we will talk about the data set that we chose for our project. Uh, also, we'll talk about the simulation software that we used and implemented in our uh, uh, project. Uh, we will show you some examples of the speech spectrogram, and we will share some of the results. At the end, we will uh, talk about the conclusions and uh, our future work. Uh, the motivation for our study, uh, we have several uh, factors that motivate us to uh, pursue this project. Uh, one is the impact of this work on the academia and the commercial applications. Uh, as Kurt mentioned, there are many applications for artificial intelligence. Um, as we can see now, we use Siri, we use uh, Alexa in our home. All these applications are based on uh, machine learning. So these are some examples of uh, such applications for this field. Uh, another motivation for this study for us was, uh, uh, as we know that Arabic is a life language and it uh, has been used widely throughout a large area in the Middle East and North uh, Africa. Uh, but uh, still uh, the research that's devote, devoted to this field of speech recognition on Arabic language is still in early stages compared to other languages, especially English language. Uh, so this gap in literature um, played a major role for us to select to uh, work on this project. And uh, we want also to implement this not only in academia, but also we want to have uh, some uh, application, commercial application for uh, deep learning, especially on this language. Um, also, we have some challenges, especially when we wanna work on Arabic language, we face with some challenges like, we have limited uh, resources, public resources, uh, limited events, conferences, workshops that are devoted to this field. Uh, so again, uh, speech recognition is part of artificial intelligence. And uh, we are happy that we have Kurt talk about this in the beginning and introduce this topic for us. Uh, and as we can see, the machine learning uh, will involve other fields. It's not only computing and programming, but also it needs uh, phonetics, linguistics, signal processing, natural language uh, processing, as Kurt mentioned as well. Uh, so as you can see, this field uh, requires significant integration of all these fields together in order to have a satisfied performance. Um, so as you can see here, there are, I think Isan, Isan, is, this is your slide. Yes, yes the, so uh, I teach Arabic language. It uh, doesn't seem uh, complicated as, as uh, we hear or we has the, uh, before the, like the, the impression about Arabic language. However, there is a several factors affect the performance of speech recognition. Uh, such as varying acoustic conditions, pronunciation variations, uh, dialects. Uh, as we know, Arabic language, one of the diagnostic language, uh, we have uh, the official language and we have the dialect language. And we here at IU uh, Bloomington, we teach the modern standard Arabic and we teach the dialect uh, go together uh, in, the same, uh, in the same time. Also, uh, various factors that affect the way in which words uh, are pronounced, such as assimilation, co-articulation, reduction, uh, deletion, and insertion. Um, uh, the Arabic language uh, also, um, I, I do want to say, uh, has uh, uh, complexity, uh, but uh, we have the morphological and uh, the uh, syntactic um, uh, complexity. Maybe uh, also the discretization uh, when the short vowels are usually uh, missed in formal uh, writing. So the short vowels uh, recognized by uh, uh, speaker, realized by speakers. However, we have some short vowels 
not realized and not being written in, in our uh, script. Uh, if you can, uh, the second uh, slide, so on. Y yes, uh, so the Arabic language uh, is the official language for 22 countries uh, in the Arab world, uh, besides the, 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 the religious language for people who are learning the Quran. Uh, uh, so the, the MSA, the standard Arabic language, uh, uh, which is widely taught in schools, in university, uh, mostly uh, official uh, like uh, government uh, writing, uh, they use the MSA. How, however, as I mentioned before, we have the dialects goes beside the, the MSA. And in this presentation, thank you for Professor Suha and for uh, Joshi uh, for uh, uh, like putting this in, uh, in, in, in the technology and uh, uh, like uh, learning uh, uh, technology. Uh, also in this deep, uh, in this paper, uh, we will uh, uh, see how the deep learning model will be uh, developed at, uh, to detect the presence of isolated uh, Arabic words uh, in audio. Uh, also, I uh, uh, give the floor back to Soha. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Uh, uh, when we started this project, we want to look at the previous work on Arabic speech recognition so we can see where we can start from. And uh, we saw that uh, uh, there was like a considerable work initiated by Linguistic Data Consortium, LDC. And it's an open consortium for universities, libraries, corporations, and government research laboratories. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, institution has uh, like an Arabic speech corpora, which contains hundreds of data, which is uh, also not free. Um, another major uh, contribution to the speech recognition for Arabic was uh, the work fielded by the IBM in the Gale project that uses also the LDC corpora. The Gale acoustic training set also composed of approximately 18,000 hours of recorded Arabic broadcasts provided by, uh, by this uh, organization. Um, also, we have another project, which is the L uh, LDC, also the Call Home Corpus of Egyptian uh, dialect. And this uh, uh, data set is a collection of informal phone conversation between close friends and family members. Uh, so as you can see why this is important, because once we call, talk about machine learning or deep learning, we need a big data set to train our network. Uh, so here we will talk about the data set that we chose for our project. And uh, in this case, we chose uh, the data set that was developed by the De Department of Management Information Systems at King Faisal University and it was available to the public by the Department of Computing Science and Mathematics at University of Stirling. Uh, this data set has an Arabic um, uh, recordings of isolated words, which contains 10,000 uh, recordings of 20 words sp spoken by 50 native male Arabic speakers. Uh, so this is, uh, we chose to use this uh, because it was available free for us and it has also a large data set here. Uh, this, as we said, like, uh, it contains Arabic digits from zero to nine, how they are pronounced as isolated words. Some other words also, some other uh, spoken Arabic words are in this data set. This is again, as I said, it's free for non-commercial applications and it's, it, should, it comes in uh, the two files. Uh, this is the link for the data set that it's available to the public as, as you can see here. So the reason why we chose it because it is free and we can use it to test our uh, network. So you can see this is a set of the data set that we have here. And uh, you can see how much like the number of the recordings for every word in, uh, in this uh, data set. Uh, the simulation software that we used, uh, we used the MATLAB. MATLAB is a highly computational uh, program. Um, it is a matrix-based language also, uh, which can allow us to do many operations on the data set that we have. Uh, we also have implemented Python as well. Uh, basically, we were trying between the two softwares to have the optimum, uh, optimal solution for our project. 
And uh, the next, uh, we have Norshad to talk about the data set, and he will show us some examples of the spectrograms. So as just Professor Suha noted that we use MATLAB and Python, uh, the file distribution was very easy in MATLAB. So uh, we decided to use MATLAB for file distribution. Uh, what we did was uh, we used the audio data uh, store function in MATLAB and created the audio data store and with the various functions that are provided by MATLAB we create uh, we separated file, uh, files into a uh, specific folder and folder names were the name of the word uh, so if the word yes was speak, uh, spoken then the folder name would be yes and this is how we distributed the data set uh, once we distributed the data set uh, Professor Suha can you uh, Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, Professor Sua, can you uh, change yes. the slide? Uh, once we uh, uh, separate, uh, separated the data set, uh, we looked for different features. Uh, uh, one of them, uh, one of the features would uh, compute the speech spectrogram. Uh, Python provides a uh, wave plot uh, function that where you can uh, plot the speech spectrogram. So we use that uh, uh, function to uh, display the speech spectrogram. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So this is the one of the uh, other features then uh, other than the speech spectrogram. This is an amplitude spectrum, uh, which is uh, uh, and this is a graph of the uh, speech spectrum. Uh, the y-axis is, is in hertz, and this is the time. And the a bar uh, is in a decibel uh, unit. Uh, the other feature is a magnitude spectrum, where in which y-axis is a magnitude, and the x-axis is a frequency in hertz. And, uh, uh, this is how the graph of uh, magnitude spectrum looks. And the last feature uh, we are going to have is a signal in time domain. So this is basically the, shows the amplitude uh, of the words uh, that were spoken. This is, a, this is an example of word zero. Uh, and we have decided to uh, choose these three features as a uh, feature for our uh, neural network. Back to you, Professor Sua. Uh, thank you, Roshan. So you can see here, we use these features to train our uh, convolutional neural network in order to uh, uh, to train the network how to recognize these, um, these uh, words. As you can see, just a general uh, uh, workflow to show how the deep learning works. So we have like the data set. The data set can be a voice uh, or sound files or images. In this case, you can see in this example, we have images and then you can feed them into the neural network. And then the neural network can realize which, which of these images is a car, for example, or bicycle and so on. In our case, we want to train the, our network so it can realize which one of these words has been, uh, has been said. This is uh, similar to when we use Siri or when we use Alexa, we just say, say words and then it will, it will compare it to what it was trained to, and then it will uh, act based on uh, what it has been trained to, and it realized these words, then it will do, for example, something for you. Uh, so basically, we try to uh, divide our data into different sets to define the architecture of the network. And uh, excuse me, I'm going fast here since we have three minutes left. Uh, so basically, in, conclu uh, in, in the conclusion, uh, we are working here to build this system to recognize these isolated words. And uh, once we finish with this stage, we are planning to use this uh, once we add noise as well. Maybe also we add some other words that we have not trained the network to realize. Uh, maybe also we can try this network if uh, the accuracy is high then we can train the network to uh, recognize the uh, continuous talk instead of isolated word. And this will be something that we can uh, do, um, again, to give more resources uh, in this field. 
And uh, again, the one major feature as Professor Isan mentioned for this project is uh, not only to recognize isolated word and modern standard Arabic, but also we can train the network to recognize uh, the dialects as well. Uh, these are some of our references and uh, we would like to thank you for your time and sorry if we have uh, overlap on our time here, uh, but we will be happy to have any questions from you.